In this lecture segment, we are talking about the rise of printed media. We will talk about objects related to print culture during the Renaissance. The artistic and intellectual flourishing occurring during the 15th to 16th centuries in Europe was facilitated by the development of new media that allowed for quicker and easier exchange of information in the form of prints. A print is a work of art made using a print matrix, like a block or a plate. In the late 14th century, artists made woodcuts using a relief process, taking a block of wood, carving a design, inking the uncarved surface of the wood, and printing the image onto paper. It required a team of artists who each had specific jobs to do in the process, cutting the block, printing the block, and then hand coloring the print. A wood block, the print matrix, could make many prints, allowing for the distribution of the image on the block. This woodblock print from 1423 shows St. Christopher transporting Christ, and this snippet of a 15th century painting shows you how a print like this may have been used, tacked up on the wall in a Flemish home. We talked about how the 15th century sees a greater distribution in the ownership of works of art than ever before in European history, and prints, which were often inexpensive, allowed for this democratization of art ownership, so images could be widely distributed. The invention of movable type, individual letters made, made of metal, by Gutenberg in around 1450, allowed for the printing of books, which created a new information highway in Europe. We looked before at an image of Rome for, from a 1493 text called the Nuremberg Chronicle that presented woodcut views of cities, accompanied by text printed in movable type that opened up a world for a reader, showing them places they will never go and giving them information about people they will never meet. Many of the developments in printmaking and publishing grew out of the work of goldsmiths, including Gutenberg. Goldsmith work involves making objects out of metal, and goldsmiths often engrave or incise lines into metal for decoration. Our next printmaking technique grew out of goldsmithing. The 15th century saw the rise of intaglio prints, or prints made under high pressure, the opposite of woodblock prints. A type of intaglio print is an engraving. A design is, engra is incised into a copper plate using a tool called a burin. Ink is squeezed into all the markings of the plate, and then the surface of the plate is cleaned, and then the plate is put onto the bed of a high-pressure press. A piece of wet paper is laid on top, and then it's run through the press. The paper is squeezed into the incised design and picks up the ink, producing a print with a mirror image of the design in the plate. So we end up with a commerce in images, with works of art that could be made in multiples and easily travel all over Europe. And they did. One of our earliest northern printmakers is an artist known only by his monogram, Master E.S., who is also the first printmaker who signed his works. He created this print of the Pieta, a northern European iconography, in 1450. We see the voluminous drapery, the expressions, the intimate presentation of sacred subject matter, the details in the hair, and the cloth. Odds are, Michelangelo owned or had access to an impression of this engraving when he was trying to figure out a harmonious solution to the inherent problem of putting a man's body on a woman's lap. And he used the massive amounts of drapery and the position of, the, of Christ's body from this print to help him solve this compositional problem. We have further evidence that Michelangelo used Northern European prints in his work. According to Vasari, when Michelangelo was a teenaged apprentice in Florence, he acquired an engraving by Martin Schongauer, a Northern European painter, goldsmith, and printmaker. His depiction here of St. Anthony, a hermit saint who was assaulted by demons during one of his periods in the desert, removed from the world, showed him under attack from dark forces that he must resist. Schongauer maximized the medium of engraving and devised a system to produce more than just a black line in a plate that would be translated to paper, but created ways to create tone from black to light gray and a range of markings in the plate from long curves to short lines to cross hatching. Schongauer captures the torsion and emotion of the scene. Hopefully you see the northern characteristics, detail, expression, using just marks in a plate 
ink, and paper to create a reproducible image that found its way to the young Michelangelo who painted a copy of the print which you can see in Fort Worth today, soaking up his art lessons from not just his master in Florence, but a German printmaker far away. The commerce of images made possible by developments in printmaking allow for a greater exchange of not just ideas but images than had ever been possible in Europe before. By the 1460s we have an explosion in printmaking and the rise of numerous printers and publishers in cities all along trade routes. This development supports and facilitates the artistic and intellectual flourishing that defines the Renaissance in Northern Europe and Italy.